Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by the Academia. Upper right hand corner, we have ATI, or Addy. I'll just go ATI. As the blue Protoss, bottom left hand corner, we have I Love XDO, who also does commentary. So check out his channel on Twitch. Yeah, I believe he also commentates Hustle League and other things. I know he's been involved in Fighting Spirit Mania. He's going to be the yellow Terran. This is going to be on Eclipse once again. The other side of the bracket to see who moves on to face the 80s mullet and Tucson equivalently. I have, and this is one of the things where I know of both of these players, but I uh, am not entirely sure of their play styles. So I'm excited to see it. When I saw I Love XTO in this grouping, I'm like, sweet. Awesome. Thank you for the bits, by the way. Basilius, for the Twitch audience. <laughs> With an awesome message behind it. But... In PVT on this map, I really, especially this, it really plays more towards the two base, or I guess three base. I feel like Protoss play this one of two ways. Either they get super greedy, and they go for quick three bases, and try to contain Terran and pin them in. Gateway warping in here, nothing too crazy. No front door seal, by the way, for I love XTO. Or they go for that Arbiter play. I actually kind of like Gateway Man on this map. Where you get greedy, you go Gateway Man, and you just interrupt that third. I've seen Master Ray, the previous seasons of VSL, just make that an art form. Getting up in that Terran third and denying it. Making it absolute hell. Refinery and barracks being built. Anti-Zealot wall to the right of the command center right now. We'll see if we see... We do have an assimilator. We'll see if we see an initial Zealot probe making its way out to scout. Cybernetic score dropping before any initial Zealot. So I think this is just going to be skip the Zealot, go for Dragoon. I love OXT going to be able to, or XTO, I always do that. XTO able to scout it. Walking into the base, he's gonna be able to confirm the location of Pylon, so knows that there isn't any cheese. Third supply depot being placed alongside the SCV, kind of waiting in position just to see if his ult's produced. Maybe a little bit concerned. Probe. One thing that surprises me out of this is usually you'll see an earlier probe move to try to get a gas deal. It's almost free on this map, but ATI not opting for that. I'm just going to go with Addy, actually. Initial Marine trying to poke away at this probe, but this is where the SimCity actually might help the probe out. Actually, the probe switching lanes, deciding to go through the SCV field to kind of block that Marine out. No second Marine being produced. So I love XTO. Realizing he's in firm position to go ahead and grab that additional command center without producing additional troops. First Dragoon's out to push the SCV back and Probe is going to be able to go ahead and get back to home base. So this is going to be one of those matches where everyone is being a little bit more gentle on the initial workers like worker worker appreciation day potentially as the probe able to get back to home base the dragoon moving forward bunker being placed but this dragoon actually might be able to get in a position with the timing of this to maybe even take out that first marine in the SEV it's going to be close bunker not yet finished marine barely gets in and that is going to send that back this is something we've seen out of a lot of protoss lately which is skipping Dragoon range to go ahead and get earlier tech. XTO stealing minerals and able to sneak in. Confirm the natural expansion. Now, Cybernetics Core range. Just And this might be a cancellation after this, keep in mind. Just wanted to show it to the SCV. Be like, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm actually going for this. Or maybe this was just a delayed and a kind of a decision to go for it. So one gate into expansion. XTO not really going to be able to punish it. Does have that factory being placed. Machine shop along the way with that second factory. And the rest of the front door being sealed up. So as things stand, the work account about even. Both players with a strong economic opener. So we are going to move into the mid game. And it looks like we are seeing the robotic facility being placed. I feel like that could have been plopped a little bit earlier. Potentially a bit of distraction. With that barracks being placed so far forward, actually, behind this bunker. Was that bunker misplaced? The Dragoon able to get some free fire and damage. This is forcing an SCV coming off the line. 
So XDO gonna have to spend some resources. More Dragoons making their way across the map. Once that range is finished, they can start attacking the front on, in earnest. First Siege Tank out. No Siege Tech being upgraded. Double Machine Shot being dropped, potentially, to either push, find a timing push in case ADI went for a quick third Nexus, which currently he hasn't even dropped his second gateway, so that is a potential. Now that second gateway being plopped down. Has a robotic facility. I assume he's going to just go two gate. Yeah, observatory. Siege Tank is on the front line to go ahead and ward that initial Dragoon count back. but And it looks like some Dragoons are going to stay in a more defensive posture. More Siege Tanks being built. So this is more... So instead of the double machine shop... No, okay. There, there we're seeing the mine and speed upgrade. I was going to say... So this is definitely going to be a push. Now for XTO in the mid game. And it might might be able to capitalize on it because this is this gateway feels like it's coming up very, very late. Third gateway is going to be online. So three gateways is sufficient troops, but the timing window of this, because it wasn't a robotics facility. Ooh, and really, I like that. Hugging the left wall to reveal the troops at the... L Actually, is he going to be able to just... Wow! XTO! Next level moves... Was it scouted? No! Brilliant play! I love it! So able to sneak the troops out to the north. Now ADI, with these Dragoons at the forward slot, are not. he's not even going to realize this attack is coming. He's got four Dragoons in his ult to defend this. I don't think that's sufficient. He's setting up to grab a third Nexus. So he might be able... He might be sitting here and canceling... Oh, man. This is dangerous now. Planning some mines just in case those Dragoons try to reinforce. Let's see if this attack pays off. Diving in. This has got to be a huge surprise. The Marine instantly gets picked off. A bad attack maneuver. So losing a lot of troops right there. Now drawing the troops back up to the upper line. There are three gateways. The Observer going to be able to clear this out. So despite clever play. Yeah, drawing them up to the high ground. The Zealot softened up. Even with the Observer there. Fortunately for XTO, the Marines t got really ransacked and so a nice defense by, by ATI it looks like he has sufficient troops now the Dragoons filtering back there aren't any mines in between and now XTO needs to get these siege tanks back and in a defensive posture Vulture is able to sneak through able to pick off that probe to prevent a third from going up bit of a failed attack but that is going to delay the third Confirms that there's an observatory. Confirms a lot of things with that. Some mines also being planted to interrupt that overall. But ATI with a, a decent supply lead now has that observer in place to see the vultures start moving out. Two additional factories have been planted down. And a third command center being built. Ooh, an additional machine shop as well. And an armory behind it. Usually you'll see the Armory a little bit earlier than this, but Armory and Academy, a very late Academy. Things being cleared out. So, XTO able to go ahead and move out on the map. He, I think he's easily going to be able to take this third. A shuttle's in position. Ooh, some idle probes. Need to get them in a gateway flood behind this. I don't like Gateway Man when you're behind economically. Critical supply cap here for XTO, though. Needs troops out there. Maybe he's just waiting for this command center to finish to fill in that supply. But that's going to give a 20 supply lead to ATI. So he's in a, a nice position. The Dragoon's starting to peel forward. No observer, though. So Dragoon's just ending up a blue blood mess on the ground. The Zealot's able to get here just before the turrets are placed. However, there's plenty of vultures to engage. Are they going to be able to wander up to the 9 o'clock, though, and get some disruption there? Looks like that is the case. Only a single turret, but the Zealot's not unloading. And the Vulture's able to scoot in underneath. So ATI mostly using this shuttle to scout instead of this Observer. Finally, this Observer that was under that window going to get picked off. These Vultures able to prevent any problems with the SCV transfer. This So XTO now in a commanding position. He was able to get his 3 o'clock base up well before... ADI was, and ADI was going for Gateway Man behind this. Finally getting up Templar Archives, Zealot Leg Speed, Double Forge to try to play the upgrade game. 
and a Stargate potentially to get an Arbiter, but right now, for the moment, he has the supply lead, but that's going to shift rapidly. Five gateways building a lot of Siege Tanks and Vultures out of the two additional factories behind this. Plus one weapons is on the way. Maybe with the double forge, we can see an upgrade lead for ATI down a little bit later. But this is a lot of Dragoons, some Zealots, no Arbiter to provide some defense. Fortunately, this wasn't going to be, because of the later, the more factories earlier, it was going to be a larger troop count and not like the heavy hitting troops. And also XTO is playing more of a defensive game. But right now, XTO's in a comfortable position to go ahead and sit on the bases he's got. He's enough. He's got enough troops to kind of defend all this territory. To sit back, get the upgrades, get close to max supply. And start bullying his way around the map. And I don't see Arbiters out yet. Arbiter Tribunal. I don't know that he's going to have enough stasis, everything else to defend against this. But we are having double forge. To make Gateway Man more powerful. However, being softened up by these mines. Going to be... XTO not tacking on additional factories as of yet. I'm wondering if he's going for a greedy fourth or just missing it. Cancel building right there. I'm not sure what it is. There's plus one weapons finishing. Vulture sneaking across. They want to maybe go for a backstab maneuver. And they might have room to do it in the natural expansion. Third base fully saturated. For both players... XTO has troops. The Vulture is looking for room. And again, I think they can find it. Gateway count starting to grow. Behind us, we got eight gateways, nine gateways, 10, 11. Yep, gateway man all the way. So many gateways. Unfortunately, when you are trying to execute this, I feel like it's more of I'm going to run my opponent over. But that is a lot of gateways. And XTO has been light on his gateway count. And he's been delayed with the upgrades. He still doesn't have... Okay, there's the second armory. But plus two weapons isn't rolling. Which means this might pay off despite the smaller Arbiter count. Might just be able to straight up run over XTO through better macro. Some mines planted to the south. The Zealots and the Dragoons moving out. Basically, a big part of this is how well is ATI going to be able to control his army. A six factory being dropped. Science facility as well. But this is kind of the critical bit I'm seeing. Is this no plus two weapons rolling. So just the plus one armor. And with that forge behind this. Yeah, this is going to be very strong gateway, man. And some nice macro coming out behind this. Feeling the map control. Going to go ahead and grab a fourth. Some vultures in that upper left to just kind of keep eyes on things. But behind this fourth, with once that Arbiter's out, yeah, this is going to be a nice attack force that's got decent upgrades, although they need to keep rolling behind this forge. Right now, the troops hit really hard, about even. There's a, But this is a... Wow, this is a lot of siege tanks. A lot of siege tanks mid-map, though. For XTO, are they going to be in position to defend? Shuttle wandering up. Looks like it's got room to zealot bomb. One siege tank down. Two siege tanks. That's three siege tanks with just this shuttle and zealots. XTO finally responding unseaging. But that was three zealots for a lot of damage. This is the problem with Terran armies. They just don't care. It's the lack of empathy is the problem, I think. Just This is the problem with humanity right now, right? It's the lack of empathy. It's like there's a zealot there. I don't want to get killed by that zealot. Kill the guy who's in that tank. It's his fault for being there. Goliath's able to wipe out that shuttle. They really did, like, nail it. Anyway. As a side note, I feel like one thing we do we do deserve in 2022, maybe 2023, Blizzard's listening, they should mix up the, the genders here. We should have some female SCVs and Marines out there and sea tanks and whatnot so they can die alongside everybody else, too. Zealots, Dragoons marching up, looking to engage this before that fourth can get established. And the tanks are not sieged. Mind drags right into it. The Zealots right on top of this line. The Arbiter is behind. Nice siege tank rim. Even some high Templar to potentially drop some Psystorm. 
And ATI is rolling this troop. Unfortunately, he had all these High Templar, but no Psy Storms are being dropped. Is it not upgraded, I wonder? And now he's going to be able to go ahead and water up, force a cancellation at this fourth. Let's see how quickly he can re rebuild this troop count. Is it that Psy Storm wasn't... Yeah, Psy Storm wasn't researched, so he had all these High Templar there, but no Psy Storm. That could have been the difference in the game. XTO now moving up to try to clear out everything at the upper nine. Also making sure that initial base wasn't grabbed sneakily in that bottom right-hand corner. Oh, that's... That's devastating, though. Now a skeleton force of Dragoons trying to defend this and just hassle this fourth base. XTO looks like he's going to be able to go ahead and wander up and take it. Let's see if he's got upgrades rolling now. So yeah, plus two weapons now coming online, but now the other armory is silent. But are the and the forges are whirling, although it feels like that's a bit late. So missed opportunity with a lack of size storm right there. That would have been would have wiped potentially everything out. And Twitch chat there wanting to see more dragoon blood on the ground. Always rude against Protoss. Nine ups. <laughs> 10 o'clock base being capped for XTO. Supply count even, which means he's got the advantage. But a lot of his troops are spread out. And ATI shooting the gap with a lot of Zealots and Dragoons. And it looks like he's just going to bully his way forward. Does he have stasis upgraded? Doesn't even need it. Pushing forward, the Arbiters going to do literally what their namesake and hold as these Vultures trying to sneak up. Again, an interruption at the fourth. Going to cap that economic lead in the mid game now for ATI. The Vultures just have to sit on the low ground and watch, try to plant some mines. The Dragoon's getting a little bit out of control, eating some mine fire. So ATI able to disrupt that fourth. Looks like OXT giving up at the fourth. At the 10 o'clock position, instead, he's going to opt for taking the 4 o'clock position, or he has some turrets in position. I like that play. ATI way up on supply now, which is to be expected, given the sheer volume of gateways he has. Three Stargates behind this. And a Fleet Beacon, so he's looking to potentially make a tech switch. And I think he can pull it off, because he's bought himself some time. He's got a lot of troops, but he doesn't have supply, so honestly... Maybe he needs to suicide some of his troops out to free up the supply to build carriers to follow it up. But the thing is, is he's going to need to make sure he wipes out ground troops of XTO on the opposite corner. Level 2 weapons, level 1 armor. XTO still falling, not staying up with his upgrades. XTO in position to do a transition now. Two carriers should he desire. Fourth base is up and running. I don't know that ATI realizes this is the case. He's not making motions to take a fifth base. Although he is clearing out some SCVs in that bottom right-hand corner. Brave SCVs taking on those Zealots. The rest of the Zealots filtering in midfield. They're going to be able to go ahead and capture some Vultures. Both players near maxed. But the upgrade count is even. ATI with a slightly larger bank. Ooh, not sure what happened there. A zealot got in position. Looks like he was able to blow up a lot of vultures. But usually, if you're even on bases, that gives the lead to turn overall. And I think XDO's happened, just happy to shell up behind this. Continue to roll the upgrades. Some idle SCVs that he needs to get in position someplace. And ATI's in a position where he needs to... Never mind. So he's got the fleet beacon. Actually, he went double fleet beacon. I think this was an accident here. Suiciding some troops down. Nice stasis. Able to get on the siege tank line. Mind drags everywhere. And he might be able to walk in and take out this fourth. But this is the exact sort of exchange I think he was looking for. Filter out some troops so he can filter it in. With those tier 3 endgame units. Some zealots able to sneak up into the fourth. Able to, And now it's kind of the decision. Do you want to take these siege tanks to the bottom right that have some reinforcements? Or do you want to just dive in and take the third? It looks like he's going to sack some troops. Finally able to get some zealots up in the 3 o'clock position to create some disruption. Going to just hang out with some Dragoons to the low ground. XTO scrambling. 
wants to try to save these siege tanks and actually probably is going to be able to do so. Science Vessels in, is here. Tanks coming out of stasis, but uh, the SCV is getting absolutely dumpstered at the 9 o'clock position. Com so that's going to put XDO back to three mining bases compared to the four of his opponent. His bank is dwindling comparatively, and now in the background you see those carriers lit up so XDO needs to defend, needs to hold some stuff. He does have some siege tanks to maybe get aggressive behind this, but I like this timing from ATI. It's kind of a tentative situation for Protoss always when you're trying to make that carrier tech switch, but trying to be frustrating. It has distractions absolutely everywhere, and this is just buying him that time to field those carriers. More troops marching down. I think he's happy to actually send these armies to their death to open up more supply to drop more carriers on the field. And I think he's going to catch XDO unaware as well because I don't see any Goliaths filtering into this attack force. Eight gateway, or sorry, eight gateways. Eight factories behind this. So right now, ATI is spending a lot of resources. He's got four bases. He's got a fifth base. Technically, this will be three mining bases because his main and his natural expansion are mined out, but the main and natural also out for XTO. And he is kind of mining at one and a half bases is what I want to call it. The four o'clock position, he's got this kind of rolling... The 9 o'clock position, he's still got a lot of vital SCVs. And that's just been assaulted over and over again. He's already staging up to potentially take his third. But you already see the troops there for ATI to dive on it as soon as it, as soon as soon motions are made to make that happen. Plus, carriers starting to filter in behind this. However, level 3 weapons, level 2 armor has come online. For XTO, which means his troops are going to hit harder. That's going to mean Gateway Man potentially not going to be as effective. Although level 3 weapons, level 2 armor is there. He's done a great job of staying on top of the upgrades with those double forge behind this. This base undetected potentially and somewhat stranded. Let's see if XTO makes some moves. ATI regathering in the gap. This is an important gap to control because if Terran can get in that, that can just lead to big disadvantages. ATI getting aggressive. Letting the Dragoons filter forward. Clear some of those mines. Never mind. He's going to let the Zealots place, face plant their way through that. They like eating explosives anyway. Huge EMP on this attack force. It's really going to soften it up. Looks like, I believe the Comsat did detect some of those carriers because some Goliaths are now being filtered into this attack force. ATI continuing to bully his way forward. Some Arbiters escorting some reinforcements across. Splitting the difference. Now that fourth base and the nine o'clock position both exposed. ATI just walking his way up. Group repair on this command center to make sure it doesn't get taken out. Some vultures flooding down to try to pin these dragoons to the low ground. Some additional dragoons engaging SEVs up on the high ground. I think the tanks are going to be able to make their way forward. The Goliath, a huge stasis on the low ground for ATI though going to make it harder for reinforcements to get here and more troops are dying the science vessel stasis so as soon as that comsat wears off the yeah, accounts at comsat being dropped here so that the scvs can try to save themselves doing what they can for the terran army goliath poking in come on scvs attack battle scvs go there we go vultures continuing to try to fight forward but while all this was happening the carrier fleet has grown to a formidable size. The SCVs alone might be able to clear out the Dragoons, but at the cost of many of their brethren's lives. So that's going to be one less base. XTO now hurting for resources, and he needs to get a tech switch on. Plus one weapons isn't there, which means the Goliaths will be able to hit hard if he can filter them in, but he doesn't have the resources. All of these factories are silent. Because he fundamentally just doesn't have the resources to deal with this tech switch. So ATI with a big bank with the tech switch with the carriers starting to push into this bottom right hand base. And XTO has nothing to defend it. He's barely holding while an Arbiter is going to contest this turret. He's barely, barely holding that 3 o'clock base. Some troops now moving up for ATI in the upper left hand corner just in case there is a counterattack for XTO. But right now ADI or Addy... In firm control of this match, the carriers slowly making their way in. Finally, some Goliaths.
being produced, but there's honestly an, a sizable enough army behind this where XTO could be in trouble. Should they try to engage in open field, those Goliaths could just straight up get picked off. Siege tanks from XTO now, which feels like too little too late, trying to push into this upper left-hand corner. The Arbiter looks like it was potentially EMP'd. So it doesn't have enough for stasis. Another Arbiter in position, but doesn't have enough. It looks like ADI is happy to just go ahead and drop this base and counterattack and clear out the 5 o'clock location. So one Nexus falls. So that's something for XDO. But ADI is going to be able to go ahead and cap what one of these mining bases. But he, this is actually might put XDO back in the match because the 3 o'clock base... Might, well, I don't know. So this base is going to be gone, but it's going to be two bases versus one base momentarily. If the macro can happen there, if he can chew through ATI's bank somehow, maybe he can sneak back into this. But I got to say, things are looking dire. A single Goliath wandering in. Or sorry, three Goliaths wandering in. There were just too many interceptors in the air to see what was going on. They're able to get take one of these carriers out before losing their lives. I don't think that's going to be sufficient to save this command center. But Siege Tanks and Vultures able to box out that upper left. So eight, ATI, even though he's got the supply lead, he's got a nice tech advantage. He's got a strong ground army. He does need to make the most of what he's got. Otherwise, XTO could climb his way back into this match. And he's not that far away from potentially assaulting... Assaulting? Assaulting. Assaulting. Spelled with a D now. Assaulting the 11 o'clock position. High Templar now have Psy Storm. They're filtering in. So now this could be a two-pronged attack. Or potentially a defense. ATI attacking maybe the infrastructure here of XTO. Or at least getting and cutting off reinforcements to the natural expansion. While ATI tries to defend upper left or maybe even retake the upper left-hand corner. 164 supply for XTO. But keep in mind... Late game tech units hurt, and oh, huge EMPs catching the High Templar, and a lot of the armies softening it up. The carriers are returning to the 11 o'clock position, and XTO taking this base. This could be the turnaround moment in the match. ATI has a big bank to work with. He needs to make sure XTO doesn't get this base up and running. He's got an army that's been heavily EMP'd to try to make it happen, though, and he's got to walk down a funnel. EMP on the carriers, which will soften them up. I don't see any Goliaths nearby, though. Science vessels eating some damage. These siege tanks have nothing to defend them. So the vultures trying to hide in the corner. Now Goliaths are marching in position, but they're being intercepted on the low ground. And a lot of ground... If, maybe if these mines can get taken out. Maybe focus fire on the mines. To allow the low ground pick off the siege tanks to make... Maybe even a recall, honestly, if there was enough energy behind all of this. Some vultures maybe going to go for a swing around mine plant. I think this might be plus one, potentially plus one weapons. The Goliath's bullying these carriers back. ATI is now mined out. He has nothing. He's just got his bank to work with, but he's got a big bank. He's going to sweep to the south. Look for the cutoff route to take out this base. Siege tanks grouping up. EMP on the carriers. Goliaths moving up. High Templar not able to drop Psy Storm. There's a Psy Storm. And now the 9 o'clock position breached. SCV's completely wiped out. XTO needs to mine from the upper left. And he's got an army. Right outside is natural, or right outside is natural, right outside, looming at the gates. Vultures and Goliaths being boxed out. They can't fight the carriers and the zealots simultaneously. The army sweeping up for ATI. And the last siege tanks look like they will fall. It is a cutoff reinforcement route. This is going to be XTO's last mining base. He's got a thousand minerals left to his name, but losing this should be the GG. Just has to watch that command center get wiped out. ATI with some map control honestly could start taking bottom right. 
Hasn't made motions to do so just yet. XTO, I don't know if this is a dumbfounded thing, a frustration thing, or he wants to make one last shot at it. Maybe distance mine, producing a few more troops. But he's, I think, yeah, even beneath half the supply count now. For ATI, it's a cleanup operation. He can go ahead and take upper, he can take whatever he wants, to be honest. SCV's trying to distance mine the four o'clock location. XCO does not want to leave. Doesn't really have the ground troops to get it done. ATI does need to get aggressive because this is no mining versus some mining, and eventually that will win you the match. He's at 200 supply. He would have to really flub this to lose this, though. I think he's a little bit annoyed that XTO has not yet GG'd. Probe, or sorry, OBS, finding SCV's distance mining. And now ATI making maneuvers. The Observer is going to join this army to go ahead and potentially negate a lot of the miner. Are we seeing any distance mining from the probes? It looks like the distance, the probe's now going to go ahead and group up. The army moving down. Some vultures and siege tanks looking to engage, but there's no answer for the carriers. And I'll see if I can grab an interceptor. Level 2 weapons on that interceptor as well. Wraith fleet. I missed the wraiths. They are paper, though. To Psystorm, to Archons, to even Goliaths. So this command center that looks like it was being built on location getting wiped out. Some probes now distance mining bottom right. The Vulture is going to try to sneak through. Maybe pick off some... There's a lot of probes to pick off here. Make sure that's not mining here. ATI just needs to sweep across. Maybe feeling a little bit uncomfortable with his current position. The Wraith looked like they're going to be able to find an exposed Arbiter. So they're able to wipe that out. The Vulture is now rushing up. Going to be greeted by some cannons. Let's see. Oh, he's going to slow push this with some siege tanks. But honestly, ATI can just A-move the rest of this attack force. Because he this isn't mining. He doesn't need to defend it. Wraith able to pick off. The Cloak Wraith able to pick off the probes in the bottom right. Did the Observer get picked off? The Observer is here. Going to rejoin. ATI making no movements to defend this. Wondering how many probes. It looks like all the probes have been repositioned to go ahead and help distance mine in the bottom right. They're going to go ahead and clear out the mine so Nexus can be planted here. A command center being floated out. Wow. XTO re grabbing the nine. ATI just needs to attack move, honestly, and finish the match. He's being very, very cautious, though. Wraith sneaking up, getting on top of the carriers, trying to pick off the observers, not able to do so. The Wraith still trying to hunt probes, and it looks like they might get a handful of probe kills. Archon's going to chase them down. They're out of it. Well, nope, they still have some energy to work with. Just trying to conserve it. All the probes for <laughs> ATI now going to be filtered to the bottom right. But ATI needs to start moving. He's allowing XTO to rebuild and start mining again. X XTO is now mining at the 9 o'clock location. He's mining here at the 4 o'clock location as well. Don't allow him to get the Goliath fleet. Or I guess it'd be Goliath... What do I want to call that? Army? Armada? Phalanx? ATI slow playing it. He knows he's got the win, I suppose. But just doesn't want to flub it. Nexus, with some cannons to protect. The probe's now gathering up. That's all 46 probes in the bottom right. Should be able to take both bases here. The Vulture's going to swing in and clear out what's left. Still some probes mining gas on this depleted assimilator, but there's not really much left to take. Looking for ATI to make moves. And finally just finish this, because it looks like XTO's made the statement, no, I'm still going to fight this out to the end. you got to kill me. He's got double the supply. An endgame army. Observer finding that nine, that upper 9 o'clock is mining again. 
Vulture is working on that Nexus. But really, kind of a pirate victory there. Ooh, High Templar dying to that mine. The Observer is being a little bit lazy here. Need to be in front clearing that out. The Zealots instead just going to go ahead and clear this. Where are the Arbiters? Come on, Arbiters. Looks like they're going to stay behind. The Vulture is coming back. ATI going to go ahead and attack at the strong point. Going to engage at the 9 o'clock. He is mining... Well, actually, a lot of idle probes here, bottom right. But he is mining on location. And EMP hitting the carriers, but there's only a single Goliath to try to engage his attack force. And I assume once this gets wiped out, this will be the GG moment. There's GG. XTO putting up a fight till the end, but uh, ATI just has overwhelming forces. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So we're going to see XTO facing off against 80's Mullet in the loser's bracket. In the winner's bracket, ATI versus Tucson. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.